and I realized that nobody on earth in their right mind would ever do anything remotely like that. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the best on-screen moments where a character dished out some epic payback to their ex. That woman deserves her revenge. Number 10, Fiery Vengeance, Waiting to Exhale. The next time you want to burn something, it won't happen again. Bernie Harris is a good woman. She was dedicated to achieving her dream of running her own catering business, but when she got married and had kids, she went the nuclear family route and gave it all up to be a stay-at-home wife and mother while her husband brought home the bacon. I guess there's no appropriate time to tell you this, but... I'm going to the party, just not with you. But when Bernie finds out that he has been cheating and is leaving her for a woman at work, she does not take it lying down. She puts his belongings into his precious car and sets it on fire. While we're not condoning this behavior, there's no denying that watching the image of her walking away from the wreckage is iconic. Number 9, Girl Code, the hot chick. Now this new chick I got, dude, she is gonna be the hottest chick at the prom. When Jessica accidentally switches bodies with a male criminal named Clive, she, as Clive, gets hired as the janitor at her school. While working in the boys' locker room, she inadvertently gets some insight into what her and her close friend April's boyfriend really think of them. That's what April is, she's my spare. Spare? Yeah, she's my backup. I mean, she was a fun ride, no doubt about this, but she is a previously owned vehicle. I'm into that new car smell. Jessica overhears Jake talking about how he hasn't been faithful to April. Naturally, Jessica, as Clive, tells April, and the two of them decide to hell with him and go to prom together. And the look on Jake's face when he sees them together is absolutely priceless. Number 8. Teaming Up the other woman. We think Mark has another mistress and we're gonna go find her. What? In a world full of love triangles and people fighting over each other, this rom-com turns the idea of the love triangle, or in this case, love square, on its head. Carly finds out that her boyfriend Mark has a wife, Kate, and that he also has another girlfriend, Amber. Rather than turn on each other, they decide to team up to get revenge on him for cheating on all of them. Oh no, that's the evil genius smile. Is somebody about to get screwed? You screw me, I screw you back. I'm a lady like that. They begin with small schemes to mess with him, but what starts out as a series of sneaky tricks quickly turns into an all-out assault on his life in which they do more than just embarrass him. They expose him for defrauding his company and trying to blame it on Kate. Talk about teamwork. What, 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 you're firing me now? Firing you, that's the least of it. The only reason you're not going to prison is because your wife gave all the money back. Number seven, living well. The breakup. You just said that you want me to help you do the dishes. I want you to want to do the dishes. Why would I want to do dishes? It's a bit odd when both people in the relationship are seeking revenge. Usually one person is the jerk that gets what they've got coming to them. But both Gary and Brooke deserve some of the blame in this breakup. I don't feel you appreciate me. And all I, all I want is, to, is for you to just show me that you care. The both of them try to get back at each other in some pretty creative ways. They are ruthless in their attempts to get revenge and dole out some seriously devastating blows. But neither of them is really satisfied until they each finally move on. As they say, the best revenge is living well. How you been? I've been really good. How have you been? I've been good. Number six, ruining his life. John Tucker must die. I'm dating John Tucker. Sorry, slipped. The tagline of this movie pretty much says it all. Don't get mad, get even. John Tucker is a textbook ladies' man, or as they call him in the movie, an operator. He manipulates girls into believing he's the perfect guy for them, but is never faithful. When Carrie, Heather, and Beth discover that he is dating all of them, their initial reaction is to fight over him. But Kate makes the brilliant point that they should be fighting him instead. It seems to me that if a guy treats you like that, you'd I break up with him, blah, 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 blah. But John would have another girlfriend in a second. No, I didn't say break up. 
I get even. The four ladies decide to team up and ruin his life. But when he somehow manages to put a positive spin on everything they do to him, they decide to use Kate to break his heart, just like he broke theirs. What goes around comes around, John. John Tucker, there's only one guy out there for me. But you are not him. Number five, not boyfriend material. Bring it on. You're a cheerleader? <sighs> Just as Torrance becomes captain of the Rancho Carne Toro's cheerleading squad, disaster strikes. As it turns out, the team's previous captain had stolen all of their award-winning routines from another squad, the East Compton Clovers. Torrance wants to do the right thing and come up with all new routines, but almost her whole team is against her. Even her boyfriend is against her. Aaron goes so far as to even suggest that she give up her captain's spot because she's not captain material. Maybe... You're just not captain material, and there's nothing wrong with that. Nice guy, right? Well, Torrance eventually realizes he doesn't deserve her, and when she catches him with someone else, she mirrors his previous words to her. She's right, he just isn't boyfriend material. You're a great cheerleader, Aaron. It's just that maybe you're not exactly boyfriend material. Bye bye Number four, taking everything, the first wives club. Elise, this hurts me. I care about you, about us, uh, about the magic. What exactly is going on here? After the death of their fourth in their crew, three best friends, Annie, Brenda, and Elise, reunite for the first time in years to find all of their marriages in turmoil. Upon reading letters that their deceased friend Cynthia left for them about her own troubles and wishing they had all stayed close, they decide to get back at their lying, cheating husbands in her honor. Oh, all we need is us, three women who aren't afraid to fight, to stand up for our dignity, huh? For yes. our self-esteem. And then we'll let him have it. They gain blackmail dirt on all of them and use it to leverage the husbands into giving the first wives all of their money. In the end, all the women are flourishing and they open a women's crisis center named after Cynthia, using the money they received. Well, you must be very proud. Please tell me about your facility. This center is dedicated in loving memory to our very dear friend, Cynthia Swan. Number three, the song, Begin Again. And you have broken every promise that we made And I have loved you anyway when Greta moved to New York with her boyfriend Dave, who just scored the role of a lifetime with a record company, she thought that the two of them were in this new adventure together. But not long after, Dave gets wrapped up into the rock star life and leaves Greta for another woman. Mim from the label, Mim, Mim. Mim, who, who we met one month ago, Mim, Mim. After experiencing her own life-changing musical journey, Greta realizes that she deserves so much better than him. As a final farewell, she writes him the ultimate breakup song and sings it to him over his voicemail. Like Dave himself says, who in their right mind would do that? Too bad for him, he didn't realize what an awesome woman he had sooner. If I could somehow say something or do anything that would undo what I did to us, then uh, just tell me what it is, help me. Number two, a taste of his own medicine, Legally Blonde. So you're breaking up with me because I'm too... blonde? No, that's not entirely true. Maybe Elle Woods was a fan of Bring It On, because she owned her boyfriend in the same epic fashion as Torrance Shipman. Originally, when Warner breaks up with Elle, he basically says she's too much of a dumb blonde for him to ever be serious about her. But the thing is, if I'm gonna be a senator by the time I'm 30, I need to stop dicking around. <sighs> Warner, I completely agree. So, she decides to get accepted into the same law school as he does and prove him wrong. But when he still takes her for granted, she decides to continue on not for him, but for herself. She gets a big internship and wins an epic court case. And when Warner finally does come crawling back to her, she parrots the same words to him that he said when he dumped her, leaving him with his jaw on the floor. I've waited so long to hear you say that. But if I'm going to be a partner in a law firm by the time I'm 30, I need a boyfriend who's not such a complete bonehead. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. 
If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the mother of all revenge, Kill Bill. You didn't think it was going to be that easy, did you? You know, for a second there? Yeah, I kind of did. When Bill breaks up with someone, he breaks up hard. Not only does he ruin the bride's wedding, but just as she confesses that she's carrying his baby, he puts her in a four-year coma. But the bride revenges just as hard. She goes on a quest not only to kill Bill, but also to tear down anyone who was even remotely responsible for what happened to her. And when I arrive at my destination, I am gonna kill Bill. She defeats the crazy 88, she digs herself out of her own grave, and finally, she ends Bill with the infamous five-point palm exploding heart technique. After two full movies of build-up, the moments the bride finally gets her revenge is like a huge exhale. You look ready. What do you think is the best breakup revenge scene in a movie? Let us know in the comments. Don't do this, Kate. I love you. It's too late for that. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.